Are you a groupie? Are you brainwashed? My name is Lloyd Irvin, and I have a very serious talk for you today that's surely going to um, cause a lot of hate, cause a lot of gossip, cause a lot of controversy, but it's a real, real just topic of discussion that needs to be talked about in the reality of the world, and I'm here to talk about today. I want to talk about this whole entire Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, self-defense side versus the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, sport side versus Sambo versus other martial arts. And I'm going to tell you some stories today. I'm going to talk about my home invasion for the very first time I've ever talked about my home invasion. And I'm going to expose everything to be some bullshit. Now, some of you are going to love this. I mean, love it. Some of you are going to hate it. And I mean hate it. Some of you are going to take my words and twist them and do whatever you want to do with them. But at the end, if you take your hate away from me, for those that hate me, and you just listen to what I'm saying, when it's all said and done, it's truth and reality. And you have to make a decision. Are you one of those groupies? Are you brainwashed? And what side are you on? So let me take you back. The story goes like this. About 15, 16, 17 years ago, about 15 years ago, I was at a, a karate tournament. We were doing some self-defense, just doing, you know, the basic katas and self-defense, um, gun disarm, weapon disarm stuff. And there was, a, there was a, a ceremony where this guy, he was like 106, 107 years old. He was getting awarded some type of award. He's been training martial arts for over 90 years and so forth. And they had a big deal with it. He was a karate guy, and I guess he did a lot of martial arts. He was former military and so forth. And um, it was impressive, you know, if a, you know, anyone who's been training martial arts for 90 years, it's impressive. And after he got awarded, then everyone went back to the katas and doing forms and doing the karate point fighting. But he was over there in his wheelchair by himself and no one was sitting by him anymore. And I learned a long time ago that you can find out so much valuable information from our elders. People, you know, older than us have different experiences. I'm not sure, you know, one of my uncles, one of, someone in my family told me about, you know, going to talk to people and, and, and introduce yourself and just asking for life experiences. So I went over to the guy, put up a chair and said, how you doing? My name is Lloyd Irvin. You know, uh, how you doing today? He said, oh, you, good young fellow. And I said, uh, I said, can I sit down and talk to you? He said, sure, sure. Like, no one, he said, no one else is here talking to me. And so I started talking, he asked me what, I, what, was, what was I into, what I was interested in. I told him self-defense, I told him, you know, I do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you know, I'm really into great Jiu-Jitsu, Ultimate Fighting Championship. He's like, yeah, he said, all, all that stuff's good, you know, you know, UFC is taking over like that. And I said, yeah, I said, I said um, right now they're proving to be the most effective martial art in the, in the world. He was like, he said, it's not. And I, you know, at this time, I'm, you know, I'm 100% like bracing. Great, great Jiu Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I was a hoist great head, and he was like, let, let me tell you something, young fella. He said, I've been doing martial arts for over 90 years. I've done well over 20 different martial arts. I've been in the military. I've, I've been forced to kill people. I have protected our country. I put my life on the line. I've seen my best friends get blown up and murdered in war. And what I've learned over 90 years of being in martial arts is that there's no one greatest martial arts. There's no one greatest style. There was a time throughout my 90 years that I used to think that there was one style. And it was always a style that I did at the current time. But there's, there's no bravado in me telling you, you know, what is the art. There's no one art. He said, the greatest lesson that I can ever teach you throughout your martial arts career, whether I'm alive or not is this and what I'm about to tell you what he told me that day has affected my life forever to this day I'll pass this on to my son I pass this on to my students and now for the first time ever I'm passing it on to you and everyone in the world now listen up pay close attention he said this he said every martial arts style is good for what it was created for. He said, listen, every martial art is great. Every martial arts is great for what it was created for. 
And then he went on to tell me about all these different styles, all these different martial arts styles that I'd never even heard of. I went and, you know, searched them online and I found them. But he gave me examples. He said, see, right now, everyone laughs at, you know, the UFC and all these different martial arts, you know, you're doing the stuff you're doing. Everyone laughs at karate. You know, see these guys doing karate here? You know, they're jumping up, they're kicking people, doing these high kicks, and people say, well, you know, that's no good. Well, if you understand what it was created for, then you understand how good it was. Because, you see, back in the day, he said, when people in the military and you're at, at, at war, and people are on horses with swords and horses with daggers and machetes uh, on horses, you had to find a way to get up and get those soldiers off of those horses. Because if you don't, and you're on the ground, they come by with the horses, <laughs> Like he said, it's a bad situation. He said, so at that time, they were using, mar and they created these high kicks. They jump up and spin and kick high so that they can kick these soldiers off of their horses to get them on the ground to fight. He said, there's other reasons too, but he gave me this as a specific example. And then he said, if you look at the UFC, the stuff that you like right now, he said, he said, he said the jujitsu is wonderful and it's great for what it was created for. He said, there's no question if if you're gonna be locked in a cage with two people, with one referee who only stops it when it's stopped, and there's two people, like he said, then the jujitsu is good for that. And then he started talking about how like in the Philippines, how they have knives and machetes, and if you're in a walking and you run against somebody that, you know, it's a bad situation, they pull out a knife and try to slice you up, and you have to know how to disarm or attempt to disarm these knives. So in their capacity, knife fighting and stick fighting was good because that's what they walk around with. That's, you know, they had sticks, and that was their thing. And, you know... He kept going on and he gave me like 15, 20 plus different examples and, I, and I, I bring them back to modern day because me, I've been doing martial arts for a long time, 30 plus years and one of my favorite martial arts was Kung Fu and I'm not sure if you ever into Kung Fu, if you're just some MMA guys, but like there's a, there's a, a movie called The Five Deadly Venoms and in The Five Deadly Venoms, you know, it was like one of the biggest movies out, you know, I was learning the style, but in Kung Fu, Shaolin Wushu, we learned this thing called China, and in China, I would, like, wrist, just arms and stuff like that, and I was really good at it, I could do them from anywhere, reach my back, grab my head, grab my thing, like, no matter where you're at, I'm a master, left side and right side, and then I got all Gracie Judicial eyes and UFC eyes and Hoist Gracie eyes, and I was doing jujitsu. I'm all into jujitsu, and I saw no purpose of it, and I left China for 15, 20 years. If you saw recently that um, my guy Jimmy Job, the interview I did with Jimmy Job, I showed you a bunch of different exercises to make your um, hands stronger for wrist locking. Well, let me tell you a story. There was a guy named Melvin Yates. He was the first guy to win an NCAA match at Howard University. He came into my school. I was a, I, have, I was a purple belt at the time, and I said, "Come on in." We wrestled, and he. Would grab my wrist with both hands and kept ankle picking me, ankle picking me, ankle picking me all day. Ankle picking me, knee tapping me. We get to the ground. Of course, he didn't know any jujitsu, so uh, I submitted him. But he kept taking me down, and I went home that night angry because I'm like, how on earth? How do I def defeat this? And you know, like I said, I always talk about winning. It's not about just winning. You know what I'm saying? It's about success. I'm trying to win. I, you know, like people say that it's not about winning. It is about winning. Every, everything is about winning. Life's about winning. Business is about winning. And winning, let me tell you this because this is one a misconception. Success and winning and 97 percenters and 3 percenters and the whole BJJ bitch assness has absolutely nothing to do uh, with being a metal chaser, nothing to do with becoming a world champion. If you can only train two times a week, then you have to train at two times a week to the best of your ability. And you're still a winner. If you're whining, bitching, moaning, complaining, you're a loser. But a lot of people took my bitch and bitch asses about that you had to be about, it's not about compete. You can, you can ha be training two times a week, have 5,000 kids, be married for 20 years, uh, have a knee surgery. It doesn't matter what your situation is. You do the best you can with what you got. 
And don't c complain about it. Don't make excuses about it. You do the best you can with what you got. Because life's about winning. You, you know, all this, you know, kids, everyone should get uh, this, everyone should get that. No, in life, there, you know, if there's one position and 20,000 people are try applying for this one position, only one person gets it. Sometimes the most qualified, sometimes somebody who knows somebody, but one person gets it. People need to be prepared for real life, and most people are not. So I'm not going to go into the whole 97%, 3% thing. That's a whole different topic. But I want to make sure you understand that when I went home that night after Melvin kept taking me down, I was obsessed. Like I was obsessed with trying to figure out how to stop him from holding my wrist. And then I thought, I dawned me at night, was like, listen, I studied, I studied an entire martial art that was geared around not letting people control my wrist. So then I thought about Chi So the next day I went back. Melvin was there, he grabbed me, grabbed, and I started doing china, and I was really, like he could not hold my wrist anymore. And one day, I fixed the entire problem. He kept taking me down, I couldn't, take him, I couldn't stop him from taking me down because I didn't know how to wrestle good at, at that point. But, um, china, and it, it, it made me think of back to the old man who told me every martial art style is good for what it was created for. So now, you think about people grabbing your wrist and so forth, but he, he said, when he gave an example of uh, like Japan and fighting, he said, if you are a soldier and you have a knife on your side or a sword on your side and people are coming attacking you, and he said the technique where people will go for the sword and the first thing you do is double wrist grab to get their wrist to make sure they can't take out the sword to cut you. Well, if they, take out, if they are, are able to take out their sword, they can kill you. So you don't want them to take the sword out, and if and if I don't get my sword out, they may kill me. So when they grab my sword with their wrist, my job is to do a chin out to release their wrist, take out my sword, and cut them. Okay. Well, hopefully you get the point. Every martial art was good for what it was created for. Now, when we talk about the UFC, the UFC. I'm a marketing guy. Everybody knows I'm a marketing guy. When Jorge and Gracie brought the UFC to America, it was the greatest martial arts, marketing, promotional strategy, probably in modern day history. Because you lock two people up in a cage with one referee who's not gonna stop anything until someone gives up. And if you think about it, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is the greatest art for that. When no one else knows Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, everyone knows that now. And if you think about it, what if someone brought up the, wanted to prove what martial arts, the greatest martial arts, and they had the ultimate fighting championship, and they brought Filipino knife fighters, and they put the knife fighter in a cage with his knives, and every martial art had to be in the cage with them, with their solo dolo style, right? The knife fighter will win. Or if the people came in there with their horses on their swords, and you were just a judicial fighter, then they would probably win, right? It's all relative. And it takes me back to the Gracie Jiu Jitsu in action match when, like, when Hicks and Gracie fought Hugo Duarte on the beach. So, for, those, for the people who have never seen it, uh, there was a situation where Hicks and Gracie then went to the beach and Hugo Duarte was there. Hicks came up and smacked, smacked Hugo, and they, everybody separated and got a big circle. And Hicks put his hands up, Hugo put his hands up, and they fought. And they fought, they fought, they fought. And at the end of the fight, I'm not sure how long the fight was, it looked like it was cut up, but at the end of the fight, Hicks and Gracie was on top mounted on the beach, pounding out, and continuing to be the champion that he is, okay? But listen, let me tell you this. I live in PG County, Maryland, and not one time in my entire junior high school or high school or college days when I played football at fraternity frat parties, fights, the, I've never seen a fight in my entire life that Two people were allowed to fight solo dolo and the fight went 20 minutes, 30 minutes because I'm going to get to the Gracie Jiu Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, the whole competition versus self defense aspect where, you know, I respect the whole concept of self defense because I'm a self defense guy. I've been studying self defense, reality self defense, mental self defense, everything my entire life, which I'm going to talk about when I talk about my home invasions. But you have one side that talks about fights should be no time limit and so forth like, like that. I have no problem with that for MMA fights. It, it, you know, let two people go and see who wins, right? But in real life, 
there's, there's a crop of groupies and brainwashed people that think that they're going to go into a fight and a real fight's going to be 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, 60 minutes and plus. Now, I'm not sure about where you live or where you live in the world or what state you live in, but I've never seen an hour fight or a half hour fight in, my, in Maryland, D.C. or Virginia my entire life. Go to YouTube right now and Google fights. Go to like coolest fights, whatever fights on YouTube and see, and see if you see any fights that were an hour plus, right? You see, all my fights that I've seen, if you go, if you use jujitsu, you're probably gonna get the crap beat out you or you're gonna end up dying, okay? And, and, and understand this, Gracie Jiu Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Sambo, Judo, Jiu Jitsu, and all the other martial arts is good for what it was created for. Nothing else. So if you're in a situation where you can be on a beach and you can get in a fight and everyone's gonna circle up and let you two fight, I'm going in with Gracie Jiu Jitsu. I'm going in with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. If there's a situation where you're in Maryland where I live and somebody smacks you and there's gonna be a fight, there's not gonna be no circle. You know, you gotta circle your head and make sure to see who's getting ready to swing on you. You gotta make sure that there's no guns getting pulled, no bats, and if you're in a club, uh, bottles. Now, let me say this, before I move on, I wanna make sure that no one, all my haters, do not take my words and try to say that I disrespected Hickson whatsoever. Please, please. Please do not say that. I am inside of Hickson's lineage. You got Hickson Gracie, George Fedetta, my instructor Lil Dollar, and me. I, although I've never trained with Hickson, Hickson is the, like, a, like a guy to me. He, Hickson's Hickson, all right? So please do not go back and start spreading rumors that I'm talking bad about Hickson. I am not. I'm saying Hickson handled his business on the beach. But I'm saying that reality and that type of fighting does not happen where I'm from. Hence, the statement the old man told me, every martial arts style is good for what it was created for, okay? So let's go to the whole BJJ self-defense versus BJJ sport. What's right, what's wrong? See, it comes back to the thing. It's, there's nothing right, there's nothing wrong. Like, sport was created for something and the self-defense was created for something. But there's, there's a group of brainwashed people that believe that the sport guys are wrong for doing what they do. And it should only be about self-defense when that's wrong too. Because let me talk, take you to my home invasion. You see, it was, a, it was a cold, rainy Friday night at 4.30 a.m. And I woke up and I was on my couch, laying down on the couch just like this. And I woke up and there were two gunmen over top of me. And as I look at the two gunmen, I look at them, I saw the nine millimeters facing me, and I rolled over. I thought it was a dream. This couldn't be true. I rolled over and I heard something, somebody say something. I looked back and it was real. It wasn't a dream. And what ne happened next to me changed my reality. I had an adrenaline dump. I had an adrenaline rush. Now let me let me just explain this first. See, I teach self-defense. I teach like distancing proper like I teach the self-defense stuff. And I talk about adrenal rush, you know, people are getting in a fight and getting that adrenaline. But the adrenal dump that I had while I was on that couch that Friday morning, on the same day of my son's birthday, with two gunmen over top of me was like any, nothing that I could have even imagined. For approximately what felt like hours, it was probably more like 30 to 40 seconds, my body, it felt like somebody injected me with something that made all of my muscles lock up. And I was looking at the guys and I couldn't move. So right, right then and there, if they had jumped on me, attacked me, did anything, I could not have done nothing. I was frozen, it was the weirdest thing. I couldn't make my hands move and then, 20 plus years, 30 plus years of martial arts experience and, and mantras and believing in self-defense kicked in because something said, you have to get it together, son. Get it together, get it together. Your wife's life's on the line. Your son's life's on the line. Brandon Vera's life's on the line. Thad's life's on the line. And if you don't get together, they're all gonna die. 
And then I took a deep breath, I said, breathe. And my muscles unlocked. And the guys would tell me, sit up. And then they start talking about how if, if, if you run, if, you, if anyone comes out saying anything, we're gonna kill every, we're gonna kill you, kill everybody in the house. And I was sitting there breathing, I was like, this is, this is some bullshit. I said, listen, I started saying, I'm not a drug dealer, I'm not sure what you hear, you can have whatever you want. And I started thinking about this stuff. Because in my self-defense, you know, you can do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu self-defense, you can do uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu sport fighting, you can do whatever you want. But if you're not, if you're not prepared mentally, the psychology of this type of situation, then whatever martial arts you're doing was not good for the situation that I'm experiencing now. See, because right now, I have to rely on what? I have to rely on my mental skills. I have to rely on my body movement. I have to rely on my vocal tone. I have to rely on personal expression. I have to think about compliance. I have to think about my body positioning, my body posture. See, I'm an alpha. I'm an alpha male, and if they're alpha males, they're not sure what they are, they got the guns. If, if I can't learn how to calm down my alpha male and go beta and, and comply right now, it's going, it may make them feel uncomfortable. It may get me shot because as I sat on that couch, all I thought about beginning when I, when I was locked up frozen was dying. Like, like bullets going into my body and dying right then and there. Have you ever seen a movie when someone gets shot or a situation happens and there's like a montage of them with their husband, their wife and kids and going through all the exper experiential of their entire life. That really happened. It was like so many things. Uh, my son's birthday was that morning. Like that day I was gonna have a, I was having a birthday party for him at his martial arts school. Uh, my wife was upstairs. Brandon Vera was gonna fight Keith Jardine, Keith Jardine in the UK in seven days. Uh, all this stuff started going through my head, all these thoughts, and I was like, man, I couldn't believe it. So anyway, I was sitting there, and I'm not gonna tell the entire story here, but I wanna get to the thing. I was listening, I was complying, I was acting beta, I was acting like anything you want. I wasn't being aggressive, like, like and, and I practiced this, I trained in this, I've, we, have, we have drills and reality-based drills, situations up in front of you. If you're in front of you, try and de-escalate the situation. Now, I always talk with my hands, you know I talk with my hands because I always do my videos, and my videos, you see my talk with my hands, I talk, I talk with my hands in front of people, but there I was, I was talking, my hands are down. Yeah, whatever you, whatever you need, I'll give you whatever you need because this could be, seem aggressive. Right, so these little tiny that's self defense. Do you practice that? Have you been taught that? Have you been talking about vocal tone? Ver like, say, if you're a deep bass voice and people think you're, you're great, like, you have to tone it down. But back to it so the whole ordeal happened. They, they gather everybody and they put everybody into the, into the master bedroom. And at the master bedroom, there's some other things that I did that, that I practiced through the skill sets. But when the one gunman left and my wife was on her on on all fours, they got Brandon Vera on all fours, because understand this, I always told myself, if I ever, I'm so, I'm so good and so confident and so skilled with gun disarming, that I always told myself, if a person ever tells me, get on the ground, and I'm in the distance to disarm the weapon, I'm going to shoot my shot and potentially die by applying a skill that I've practiced my entire life. I am not I'm going to get down on all fours and let this man who I don't know his situation, his position in life, if he's a stone blooded killer, which my guy ended up being. My guy ended up uh, being charged. He had, been, he had murdered people. He had killed people. And if I got on the ground that day, I may not be here talking to you. Brandon Vera may not be alive. My wife, my family, my kid may not be alive. But I made a decision based upon 15 years of, of saying this mantra in my head. If I ever get put, asked to get on the ground and I am in disarming range, I am not getting on the ground. And I had a situation when he was asking me to get on the ground. I used my son in a situation to, to buy some time. I was able to buy the time and then it happened. He had the gun on me and he told me, get on the fucking ground, get on the ground, get on the, and, and, he's, and he was pointing the gun over to where Brandon and my wife were, get on the ground, get on, get on the ground. And it was like slow motion. But every time the gun went off me, it went from red light on me, don't go, green light, get on the fucking ground. 
green, red light, green light, red light, green light, red light. And then on the next red light, I mean the green light, I went. And I was able to successfully disarm this attacker. It worked. Hooray for me. I potentially saved my family's life, Brandon Vera's life. I'm here to talk about it. But now let's go back to self-defense. In that situation, on that couch, in that situation coming up my stairs, on that situation in a home invasion, kidnap type situation, my Gracie Jiu Jitsu didn't help. My Brazilian Jiu Jitsu didn't help. My Judo wouldn't have helped me. My Samba wouldn't have helped me. My wrestling wouldn't have helped me. My karate, my Kung Fu, none of that would help me. In that situation, my Sambo and my China helped me. My mental preparation for these type of situations helped me. My belief in realistic self-defense help me you see so when when you talk about these you know self-defense instructors like like a lot of these self-defense instru instructors conceptually are only teaching you theory like if you have if like a lot of these instructors have never they haven't been in any real fights they haven't been attacked with knives they haven't been attacked with guns they haven't been shot at they haven't been experienced these things they haven't been kidnapped they haven't been in a home invasion when they had to to save their life, they can't. They can't even give you an experience of what it's like to feel like like your life's on the line. And before I had this happen to me, I didn't either. But you know, I, I believed in what I believed in. My conviction, and my understanding, and my education, and my teachings since that situation have completely changed based upon real life experience in a real life situation. Everyone else has no idea. They're guessing. Theory. And some people should be ashamed because some people are, are telling you like this is the end all be all because you groupies and you brainwashed people are brainwashed into this thing. And like I said, I'm I'm into a thing too. Like we're all into things. But the thing if if you're a self defense guy, if you're a sport guy, so you can understand this. Sport judo can help you more than ground jujitsu in a club when a situation happens, somebody touches you and you need to double leg them or you need to throw them on the ground and try to knock them out with a concussion or dislocate their shoulder off the throw because you don't want to go to the ground. You know, a judo can help in that situation. And let me prefer let me let me say this. I am not disrespecting any art. I'm not respecting, disrespecting any group. I'm, all I'm saying is this. Every martial art is good for what it was created for. Now, whatever art you train in and whatever you're doing, understand what it was created for. And if you ever find yourself in a situation where you have to defend yourself in a situation that your art was created for, then congratulations for you because you'll be in a good situation. But you have weapons, you have multiple attackers, you have home invasions, you have kidnappings, you have all these different types of situations and scenarios that a lot of these arts do not cover. A lot of these arts don't even address it. The mass majority of the art that I talked about don't teach you about mental skills, don't teach you how to prepare mentally, don't teach you about repping and visualization of self-defense skills. Have you ever visualize being in a home invasion? Have you ever visualized being in a bank and someone um, someone walking and pulling out a gun telling everybody to get the fuck on the ground? Have you ever visualized uh, speaking to somebody with vocal tone? Have you ever visualized any of this stuff in the art you're doing? If you haven't and this happens, you don't know what's happening. You are not trained for this. So with this, with, with all this said, I want to close out like this. And if you hear somebody in the background, that's my dog. I locked him in here so he wouldn't be barking, uh, but he's trying to get out. Um, so let me close with this. Please don't say I diss his, Hicks and Gracie. I love Hicks and Gracie. He is my icon of jujitsu. He is the head of our lineage. You know, 
Um, please don't do that to me. Please don't say I disrespected or I dissed any one group because I did not. Everybody out here that has their group and has their brainwashed people and their groupies, good for them. As long as they're teaching a real art, you know, it's good for what it was created for. Don't be brainwashed that it is anything else. See, when I teach sports, you just understand what it is. When I teach self-defense, I understand what it is. I can teach you a weapons disarm, and I, I can teach you for 20 years my gun disarm that helped me in my home invasion. And if you get pulled over by a bunch of guys and they have knives, that 20 years goes down the drain because you don't know it. That's the reality. That's what you need to think about. To all my haters, keep hating, please. It drives me, it motivates me, and it lets me know that I'm doing a good job getting my message out to all my supporters no need to send me messages about you know keep doing what I'm doing no need to send me messages about don't let don't let the haters get me down listen they don't get me down I'm immune to criticism if you if you only knew I'm immune to criticism I love it because what I'm doing I believe in what I'm doing save my family's life my martial arts saved my family's life. The style that I know, I'm open to all styles. That's why I never close my doors to anyone. I let anyone come train with me from any team. Even if you're from a team that hates me, I, you can come. My doors are open to anybody. I'm open to learn any style. If you're a kung fu master, if you're a chi master, you come here and have something to show me, I'll bow down and I want to learn because I know that e each and every art has things that I can learn. And I have been smart enough to be able to take these individual pieces and put them into my jujitsu. That's why you see us uh, wrist locking so many people because it's not traditional jujitsu. It's grip strengthening, like, like the strength in your hands. It's, it's locking, it's, it's a positioning and things. I, I do different things that's not traditional jujitsu, but it doesn't mean it's ineffective. If you're doing a situation, you leave your wrist out, I'm gonna get it. That's just what we do. It's the same way I used to go to Brazil. I used to get booed when I, got, when I, when I went for a leg lock, booed. Booed. I mean, the crowd would boo me, and now they do it. That comes to a whole different video. So, in closing, thank you for watching the video. Don't spread lies about me. Listen to what I'm saying, and this is all it is. Every martial arts good for is created for. Nothing else, nothing more. Every martial art has their groupies and their brainwashed flunkies. Are you one of them? That's my question. Take care and peace.